Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. I am Sir Jay and today we're going to learn about science. So sit back and enjoy learning. So today we're going to learn about transfer of energy through trophic levels. Energy is needed by all organisms to carry out essential life processes. Energy is needed to maintain or for maintaining a constant body temperature. It is needed for movement and for eating and digesting food. So at the end of this lesson, you're going to ask yourself, how does energy flow in ecosystem? And the second question that you need to ask yourself is, how do plants and animals obtain the energy they need? So before we begin our lesson, our learning target for this video lesson is I can trace the flow of energy and nutrients through an ecosystem. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred or changed from one form to another. So like for example, in the process of photosynthesis, the process in plants and some microorganisms that uses energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide that's the air that we exhale and the water into glucose and oxygen, which is the oxygen is the air that we, we need in order for us to survive. So meaning plants need also energy. The plants, the energy that they need is the energy coming from the sun. Tama? Meaning that's the energy and that's essential energy that they need for them to produce oxygen and glucose which is the sugar in other form it can also produce fruits Tama? so meaning another thing that they need is carbon dioxide and the third one is water so that this plant will survive so yun lang yung kailangan ng plant para mabuhay through the process of photosynthesis Nagkakaroon tayo ng, nagkakaroon ng product yung plant. Ito na yung oxygen and that's the air that we breathe. And yung sugar or glucose. Ito na yung mga fruits. Ito na yung mga pagkain na kinakain ng mga living things. Okay? Especially the herbivores. Okay? Especially the primary consumers. Food chain is a linear sequence that shows the transfer of food energy from one organism to another in an ecological community. Food chains represent the feeding relationships between organisms. As organisms feed on each other, energy and nutrients from one organism to the next, the amount of energy flowing through an ecosystem does not remain constant. It decreases continuously along the food chain. In the food chain shown in this example, when different food chains are interlinked, a food web is formed. Food web are complex or food relationships that exist in natural ecosystem. In a food web, each animal and plant may be part of more than one one chain or one food chain like for example it is a network of interrelated food chains among species in an ecosystem leaves will be eaten by a caterpillar grass can be uh, will be eaten by a rabbit or a grasshopper or any other animals so meaning sir j pwede tayo magdagdag ng iba pang animals of course pwede tayo magdagdag ng iba pang animals how energy is transferred in trophic levels? Now, you may ask, ano nga ba talaga yung trophic level? Ano nga pala yung trophic level? So, let us identify this one. Trophic level is the position occupied by an organism in a food chain. So, ito yung position nila kung gaano karami yung energy na kakailanganin nila para sila mabuhay or para sila mag-survive. So we have here producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and quaternary consumers. So these are what we call trophic levels or trophic level pyramid. So bakit siya pyramid? Bakit hindi pwedeng square? Bakit hindi pwedeng circle? Bakit hindi pwedeng ibang shape? Because there is a reason 
behind why this is shaped in pyramid. This is the reason why. We can identify now the great amount of energy that they need. We have here level 1, plants, algae, and some bacteria. So meaning these are what we call autotrophs. The second level is what we call the herbivores. The third level is what we call organism, usually eat primary consumers and other other mat animal matter. Like for example, the rat, pwede siyang kumain ng fruits, pwede din siyang kumain ng, ng iba pang organism in order for them to survive. Like for example, si frog, pwede siyang kumain ng insect, pwede din siyang kumain ng iba pang organism na kakailangan niya para mag-survive. Like, but, but it's still a herbivore. So we have here the next level, which is the fourth level, organisms that eat secondary consumers. So this group or this level or organisms will be eaten by tertiary consumers. And the tertiary consumers will be eaten by another organism, which is we call quaternary consumers. Okay, now, this is now the reason why it's called a pyramid. Because we always follow this 10% rule. Ano ibig sabihin ng 10% rule? The 10% rule is the 10% of the energy harvested at a lower trophic level, which is these producers, is transferred up to the next higher trophic level. Meaning, remember, from the lower trophic level, there is energy. And energy here is coming from are com, uh, is coming from the autotrophs. So, yung energy dito is completo pa. Pero according to this 10% rule of the energy food pyramid, it can only transfer 10% energy to the higher trophic level. So, like for example, if the energy energy here is 100,000 kilocalories, 10% of that can only be transferred to the next level, which is the higher level, the primary consumers. And then 10% 10 of 10,000 will be transferred to the secondary consumers and so on and so forth. So bottom line, you need a lot of energy in the primary, uh, you need a lot of energy in the producers in order for this primary, secondary, tertiary, and uh, quaternary consumers will survive, okay? Level 1 is 100%, and that is 10,000 kilocalories. So if you're going to compute what's the 10% of 10,000 kilocalories, that is 1,000 kilocalories. And then what's the 10% of 10, 1,000 kilocalories? 100 kilocalories. 10% of 100 kilocalories is 10 kilocalories. 10% 10 of 10 kilocalories is 1. So bottom line, if you're going to study from the 100%, pagdating doon sa quaternary consumers, konti na lang yung energy na natitira. So meaning, itong quaternary consumers, konti na lang yung energy na, na, na nakukuha nila. So hindi pwedeng konti dito sa producers para makasurvive si quaternary consumers in order for have what we call ecological balance kailangan marami tayong pagkain kailangan marami tayong plants so meaning the producers is the number one there is a big role here pagdating dito sa mga producers hindi pwedeng kumonte or mag decrease ng number yung mga plants natin here, producers occupy the first trophic level. Producers are also called autotrophs or photosynthesizers. Autotrophs mainly include plants. They trap energy from the sun to produce food through photosynthesis. So as you can see, these are some examples. Meron din autotrophs sa water at meron din autotrophs sa land. In, but both of, the, both of these examples are all autotrophs. They can produce their own food. Okay? Second, if there are producers, there should also be consumers. So the second to the third trophic level involves organisms that feed on producers. These are consumers or the heterotrophs. They are organisms not able to produce their own food. Consumers 
can be herbivores, which feeds on plants, carnivores, which feeds on animals, or omnivores, feeds on both plants and animals. Example, itong panda na to. Kumakain siya ng leaves. Meaning, he is considered as herbivore. And then, this um, animal, which is a lion, can be considered as carnivores. If, if this animal eats plants and uh, meat or animals, then it can be considered omnivores because they both eat plants and animals. Next, the primary consumers are often herbivores. Example of the primary consumers are rabbit, cow, grasshopper, and horse. So we have here some examples. Hindi yan kumakain ng mga meat. Hindi sila kumakain ng mga animals. Okay? Kasi yun lang yung ka pwede nilang i-digest. Yun lang yung kaya ng katawan nila at yun lang din ang kaya ng kanilang uh, ability para mag-survive. Okay? Next, we have here the secondary consumers. The secondary consumer feed on the primary consumer. They can be carnivores or omnivores. Example can be snake that kills and eats a rabbit. So that is the secondary consumer. Most of them can be considered carnivores or omnivores. So sila yung mga secondary consumers. Now, next, the ter tertiary consumers feed on the secondary consumer. They can be carnivores or omnivores. Example are hawks that, eats, that eat snakes. So tulad ng nakikita nyo sa picture, itong hawk na to ay kaya niyang kainin itong snake na yan. Because this hawk can be considered as tertiary Consumers. Next, predators are the organisms that are usually at the top of the pyramid and receives the lowest amount of energy. We don't consider as apex predator because we don't eat meat only. We, we also eat plants, we also eat meat, we also eat animals. Pero si apex predator, they only receive uh, lowest amount of energy because... Uh, from from the pyramid that I shown to you earlier, the 10%, yun lang yung transfer from lowest trophic level to the highest trophic level. So, kumukonti. Maliban doon, there is what we call this ecological relationship and there are competition from different organisms. So, kukonti na lang ang nakakain nila. Kaya, minsan, these are the organisms that are more aggressive to find food among uh, in the ecosystem. Okay? So, meron tayong huli. These are what we call decomposers. The separate trophic level is occupied by decomposers such as the tritivores. Decomposers feed on dead or decaying organisms. Common examples of decomposers are bacteria, worms, slugs, fungi, such as mushrooms. Decomposers are considered as the recyclers of nature. They allow nutrients to flow in food chain and food web. So lahat ng organisms, darating ang araw na hindi na sila mabubuhay at mamamatay. They will be considered as dead or decayed matter or organism. Sino ang kakain sa kanila? Sino ang magdi-decompose? These are what we call decomposers. It can be eaten by the worms, slugs, fungi, or any other organisms or microorganisms. Okay? Now, energy flow through a food chain. The amount of energy at each trophic level decreases and moves through an ecosystem. On average, about 10% of net energy production at one trophic level is passed on to the next level. So imagine that if you are eating or the producers are small amount, ibig sabihin, kukonti na lang din ang makakain nung nasa first level, second level, and so on and so forth. Kapag marami naman ang producers or marami ang plants, dahil magkakaroon din ng mas maraming food doon sa first trophic level, second trophic level, third until doon sa fourth level. The rest of the energy is lost largely through respiration, respiration growth and reproduction, defecation, and non-predatory death. Okay? 
how important is the feeding relationship in the ecosystem? It's very important because when they are, when there's no producers, then these organisms will not survive. Even us. Kapag walang plants, mapipilitan tayong kumain ng meat. Kapag wala namang meat, mapipilitan tayong kumain ng plants. Pero kapag wala talagang plants, wala din, nga, wala din makakain yung mga animals. Tama? Kapag walang animals, hindi din tayo magsusurvive. So these are what we call mutualism. We need plants. Plants also need humans para mapadami sila. Actually, pwede namang dumami yung plants kahit na walang tao or walang human being. However, magkakaroon tayo ng magkakaroon ng mas mabilis na pagdami ng mga plants kapag merong proper propagation of this what we call producers. Okay? Ngayon, pag hindi naman nag-survive yung mga small organisms, I mean, pag hindi naman nakakain yung mga first trophic level, then mahihirapan tayo maghanap ng iba pang source of energy natin. Kasi hindi natin hindi lang natin nakakain, hindi lang natin nakukuha ang ating um, energy coming from the plants, nakukuha din natin yung energy natin from the other animals. So ganun ka-importante ang feeding relationship in the ecosystem. Okay? So that's the end of our video lesson. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.